I don't really quite remember the story of how I found my way to the trumpet in the first place. I think I half stumbled into it and half because my grandfather played, but I'm really grateful that I did because this is the, not, maybe not the most, but one of the most versatile instruments that there is. I didn't really like classical music actually until I was 17 or so, don't tell anybody. Um, but in the meantime, that, that meant I got to play in ska bands and jazz bands, rock bands, concert bands, kind of you name it. Uh, until I eventually found my way into the orchestra. In addition to the versatility stylistically, the trumpet can also make a variety of sounds. Uh, you probably will most know it for the typical bugle call or fanfare type thing, which has even found its way into symphonic music, uh, like this call from William Tell Overture. Uh, we can do sort of growling type sounds with our embouchures and make sort of a jazz kind of a feel. Uh, we can go as far as even to make the horse whinny sound itself. So on and so forth, you get the idea. So my ultimate go-to move to learn music or to work on music that's pretty hard for me or just basic practice technique in general uh, is something I call changing the rhythm. I mean, I guess that's not really the name of it, that's just what it is. But uh, for example, like the etude that I was just playing where there's a lot of running repeated notes of the same value in a row. If you have something that's tricky that's like all 16th notes or all 8th notes, this is a trick that really helps me. So what I do is I change the rhythm usually to a dotted eighth sixteenth of some sort or sixteenth dotted eighth and by doing that kind of funky rhythm your body is forced to get really creative of how it coordinates and balances so it makes it actually harder for you to play but then when you go back to play it normally it feels quite a bit easier um, so I usually when I do do the rhythm changes I, I make the tempo a little bit slower to help me kind of bake it in a little bit easier um, so again, that, that piece where we were kind of just playing the same thing over and over. So I'm going to change all those running eighth notes into dotted eighth, sixteenth eighth, for starters, and slow it down a little bit and then I'll flip it and do it the opposite way. And then I'll do the reverse. So it's kind of kind of quirky my my brain and body's like, yikes! And then when you go back to normal, in theory, it should feel quite a bit easier to play. So now I'm going to take you guys through some just kind of basic trumpet tips, stuff that's helped me over the years and that might help you guys out uh, in your studies. Um, right off the bat, we'll get into posture. So everybody has a little bit of different take on this, but for me, um, I do the classic, I try to sit up straight, my back is off the back of the chair, and this does take a little bit of getting used to. I remember when I first tried to move a little bit forward and get my back off the chair, I was kind of uncomfortable for a couple weeks, but once your sort of stomach and 
general skeleton gets used to supporting yourself in that way, it actually makes concentrating and also sitting uh, a lot more healthy for your brass plane. Um, so I kind of sit up straight, shoulders down as much as I can help it, um, and that's kind of the basic go-to. Um, as far as when I get the instrument up, I try my best, doesn't always work, but I try to bring the instrument to my dome instead of bringing my head to the trumpet. I usually end up sometimes getting pulled a little forward, that's my bad habit that I'm always working on. But I generally just try to think chest up and out, shoulders down, and then I bring the trumpet up to me. So it's almost kind of like a Superman type chest, best you can, shoulders down, and then that should give you a pretty good setup. Then when I go to breathe, all I think about is imagining my ribs this way, breathing, and then the ribs going out. So then I don't have to think about really anything of how stuff's moving except just ribs out. So when I breathe, thinking of the ribs going this way, which of course they can't do, but thinking of ribs out that way kind of just moves your whole body into the right sort of direction without having to worry about too much at a time. Um, when I hold the trumpet, I have my thumb through this little hook here, ring finger through this little circle. Some people do middle finger, we call this the power grip. Uh, I just do the regular one with the pinky underneath. And then I put my thumb in between the first and second valve under the lead pipe, and then my three fingers over the top. Now, ideally, you'll have your pinky resting on the ring here. I have a bad habit of doing uh, flat fingers, um, but I'm kind of working on that all the time too. When I have to play something really fast, I generally tend to kind of naturally just go this. So this is kind of the ideal way to do it. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the basic just set up. As far as um, practicing and exercises that you can employ these kind of tricks, I always like to use a metronome. I've got this super old school wind up one here. But I always keep the metronome going and that helps me kind of keep my breathing and everything in balance and coordinated so that I know when I'm going to start so I can work on that easy turnaround. I always want to just at the end of the day think about having an easy blow with no real tension kind of at the top of the breath. So it's like pulling an arrow back and then just releasing it or swinging a golf club and just going right through the ball um, at the bottom. So I'll have the metronome on and I'll think of all that chest up and out, shoulders down, and then my ribs are going out when I breathe. This is maybe not the best way to show breathing, but you can kind of see, hopefully, everything kind of is like a fireplace billows. Uh, with the breathing. So um, some exercises that maybe you guys can try to help out with range and endurance because this is something I struggle with quite a bit um, is thinking of it maybe a little bit differently than you do right now. Um, I like to think of endurance as maintaining really good form for as long as I possibly can. So I practice in really short chunks and I always rest as much as I play. That's the number one thing that has helped me with range and endurance always resting as much as I play. So if I play some crazy high note thing where I'm working on something fancy, whatever, you know, something like that, I'll rest for that amount of time that it took to play that weirdo lick. Um, or if I play eight measures of something from the Arbenz book, I'll rest the time equivalent of those eight measures. And then you are able to diminish the negative returns that happen if you play for too much at a given time, especially on a trumpet. As far as an exercise that can help, something you can experiment is uh, what my former teacher, Michael Miller of the Cleveland Orchestra, calls upside down bends. So what you do is you play a scale, and then when you get to the top note, you try to keep buzzing the note that you're on, but then you finger a half step up while still buzzing that same note that you stayed on. So if I play a scale from F to C,
so forth. So you kind of convince yourself you're just going to keep buzzing that C and then you finger the C sharp. Keep buzzing the C and then when you release the 1 and 2 and you go to the actual open C, it should feel really easy to play and find that really rich sound. And the longer you can preserve that rich tone, that's going to help you with endurance and range and all sorts of epic stuff like that. Well, I really love music because it connects to my soul in a way I don't think anything else does. Um, I remember being a younger kid and going to see live concerts and the way that I would feel as an audience member was sort of unlike anything I had experienced before and what encouraged me to really want to play an instrument was thinking maybe someday I could uh, practice and get good enough to make other people feel the way I did um, as an audience member and that's kind of why I practice as much as I do and why I love to play trumpet um, because it gives me that chance to connect with people but even more than that hopefully make them feel um, at least a little bit of the good stuff that I used to feel and still do feel as an audience member. Um, you know playing an instrument in addition to being fun for you and giving you a sense of ownership over skills and all sorts of good things like that um, I think it really just gives you a great opportunity to make lasting friendships. All my best friends I've made through playing an instrument, whether I met them at a music festival or a summer camp or playing in band, and it sort of just brings people closer and, and those things can really last a lifetime. It's, it's a really special thing. Um, and if I had to leave you with some of my favorite music to listen to, trumpet-wise, since that's kind of where we're going with this, anything Empire Brass, but specifically the Royal Brass album, the entire thing, and then Class Brass, which is uh, transcriptions of orchestral music for Brass Quintet. Um, but that group just is absolutely unbelievable. It's